the high holiday season is once again upon us. Jews throughout the world will gather together in synagogues and will pray to God and ask for a Shana Tova, ask for a good year. We know that we need to be judged. Unless we are judged, we're not important. We have to know that we're needed, that God needs us, and that God cares for us, and that God loves us. Unless we know that we're needed, that we're important, it's hard to fight off the depression of life. Rosh Hashanah is therefore a happy holiday. The high holidays are happy holidays, even though their theme is somber, because they teach each one of us that we're important, that we are necessary for the betterment of the world, that God is counting on us, that we're his partners in creation, that all of us have potentiality, that God created each of us with a job to do in this world, to improve this world a little bit, to make sure that the realm of good is expanded a little bit. We believe in the conservation of mitzvah, in the conservation of good deeds. You know, according to science, there is the conservation of energy and the conservation of matter, which means that you can't destroy matter or energy. It just changes its form. And since the time of Einstein, we now know we, that we can convert matter into energy. We believe the same thing with good deeds. We believe in the conservation of good deeds, that every good deed that we do counts, and that based upon it, future generations can improve this world till truly we make this world into a paradise. We are God's junior partners in creation. God is counting on us. He wants us to perfect the world. And on Rosh Hashanah, we review our record. We find out how we are doing. We look over our deeds, and we look over our goals, and we try to determine how can we improve? How can we make this a better world? And the rabbis teach us that the more that we attach ourselves to others, the more we're concerned about others, the more we grow and the more we find ourselves, while the more we concentrate only on ourselves, the more we lose ourselves. Being self-developed and self-this and self-that ends up in selfishness. It ends up in us not being able to find that we are doing our task. We become alienated. And as Kafka once wrote, we become like grasshoppers. We become like cockroaches in our own eyes. I reminded the story they tell about a, a young man who married the daughter of a very famous businessman. And the businessman, in order, short, in order to show his appreciation to his family, took the young man into the business. And he gave him 49% of the stock. And then he put the young man in the stock room. And everything went to the wrong place. He put him in billing. Everyone got the wrong bill. Then he put him in manufacturing. and Everything was manufactured wrong. And he didn't know what to do, so he took him to the office and he said, Young man, what should I do for you? What can I do with you? And the man said, Buy me out, Dad. Buy me out. God tells us he's not going to buy us out. He wants us to do his bidding to make this a better world. On Rosh Hashanah, their destiny is inscribed, and Yom Kippur is sealed. How many shall pass away, and how many shall be brought into existence? Rosh
חרב, ומי בחיו, מי ברוב, ומי בעצמו. Yes, we are called upon to be God's partner in creation. And yes, we fail. We have failed many times to live up to our potential. And therefore, we must do tshuva. We must repent. The word, though, in Hebrew for repentance doesn't have the same connotation as the word has in English. The word in English means to put in a pen. If sheep run out of their pasture, they have to be repent. They have to be gathered together again and refenced. But this is not what shuva means. Shuva in Hebrew means to reply, to answer the challenges at hand. Have you fulfilled your potential? Have you been what you could be? That's what you have to be. You have to try to be what you can be. It's not that you have sinned, that you have hurt your fellow human being. Oh yes, you may have done that too. But you could have been so much more. You have so much potential. You have so much talent. There's so many more things you could have done to help your fellow human being. But yet many of us fail because we concentrate only on ourselves. We don't look outward. The rabbis say that the difference between a mirror and a window is only a little bit of silver. If you put a little bit of silver behind the window, you end up by only seeing yourself. But if you remove that silver, you're able to see the whole world. How do we fulfill our potential? How do we do it? We do it by three ways. By either accomplishing a self-set goal, the mountain is there, climb it, or by bringing joy to others, we see that they are downtrodden. We see that they need some help and we help them. Bringing a smile to a baby's face, what could be more pleasant? And also, we fulfill our potential when we know that we're loved for ourselves. We know that we are worthy of being loved, that we have self-respect, that we have dignity, and God gives each one of us dignity. He says, you're important. I need you. You can do great things, each of you, within your ability. In the Torah, it says that Moshe and Aaron were equal, shakula. How could they be equal? Moshe received the Ten Commandments. Aaron even sinned at the golden calf. But they were equal because they both lived up to their potential. I reminded of the story they tell about a young man in Russia who wanted to get out. The Russians wouldn't let him out. But he went to a circus and he noticed that the lion died. And so therefore, he went to the owner of the circus and says, let me put on a lion uniform, a lion skin, and I'll pretend I'm the lion, I'll get out of Russia. It worked very well. He was in the lion cage prancing around. And all of a sudden the door opened and there in came a tiger. He immediately became frightened and he said the Jewish prayer before one dies. He said, Shema Yisrael at the top of his voice. When all of a sudden he heard a voice coming from the tiger which says, Be quiet. Do you think you're the only Jew in Russia who wants to get out? 
We all must look not only at ourselves, but at each other, and we can fulfill our potential. The great chauffeur has sounded, a gentle whisper is heard, the angels quaking with fear declare, the day of judgment is here to bring the hosts of heaven to justice. Let's <laughs> 